Um, the, the, the second area that we were going to move into was, you know, people have these biases because they, perhaps they don't see the role models in this space. But what is the reality? Like, okay, so they don't see it. So maybe they have some assumptions about what it is. And maybe, like, I, I wrote in the promo for this that there's this kind of feeling that it's this recluse, right? Like this person who doesn't talk to anybody. That's the coder. But mm -hmm. is that really the case? Like, what is, like, what are coders like? And um, maybe you can speak from your experience of what, what the world of, of coding is like. Definitely. Um, so when you talk about coding and computer science, it's not like it was back in the 1980s where, you know, you've got this dungeon or sorry, basement um, and the lights are like really low. And then you've got somebody who's like just like chipping away at the computer. Um, it's not like that anymore. It can be. It depends on who's doing it, right? Um, but coding and computer science, the world have become a lot more collaborative in that, yes, there's going to be time where you're, you're solving problems and creating algorithms on your own, but your eyes are not the only eyes that are ever going to be on that. Um, and so... And now with more and more people of all ages, like children and adults getting into computer science, there's like this whole community around the area. Like if you, um, as an adult, wanted to explore computer science, there's a lot of different like meetup groups that are meeting online around it. Um, and there's a lot of different free resources out there too um, in order to learn like the foundations of computer science and machine learning and like how those things fit into society. So it's... <laughs> uh, so like, can, okay, so I love this. Like <laughs> we're living in a collaborative world. Um, you know, you're suggesting to join a community. Can you give some examples of communities that might be good to join? Definitely. So it um, depends on your role. Um, like if you're an educator, for example, there's a whole ISTE com um, community around computer science and there's one around um, artificial intelligence. ISTE is the International Society for Tech and Education. Long acronyms. Um, if you are just a parent, um, or just an adult who's interested. Um, there are meetup groups, and meetup groups are mainly free, but it's based on your geographical area. And I mean, meetup groups cover everything from, like I was in one when I was in Paris around like writing, and it was called Shut Up and Write, and so we'd write for like three hours <laughs> every Sunday and stop for like 10 minutes on the hour, it was fun. Um, but there are also ones around computer science, um, and there'll be like, like different boot camps and it really just all depends geographically on your area as well. Um, specifically in the computer science uh, field, uh, you talk about like some communities, I think in the book, uh, for example, Technovation. Um, maybe you can yes. talk a little bit about what that is. Definitely. So um, in the book, I talk about, and I'm updating the book right now, but in the book, um, I talk about Technovation Challenge. And Technovation Challenge in particular is this competition for middle school to high school girls, age girls, um, to create an app that solves a problem in their community. And so like that feels like a really big ask, but what's really great about it is that um, girls cannot work by themselves on this. Like there has to be at least two and teams of up to five are advisable. Um, it's all free. And they make an app in an Android environment to address a problem that they see in their community. So it could be like people are littering too much or maybe people aren't wearing masks or there's a bullying problem. Um, and what's nice is that in the curriculum for the Technovation Challenge, um, it provides step-by-step -step curriculum on what to do. So like as a facilitator, if you're a parent wanting to um, facilitate a group, you don't have to have very much like um, experience before going in because it's all provided for you. Um, and then it also teaches the girls how to build business plans and marketing plans um, for the app. And then if they want to, then they can submit the app into this international competition, which is, it's just amazing. If you have never heard of Technovation Challenge and you have girls, um, whether you're an educator or a parent, definitely check it out. Um, there's a whole YouTube channel of like previous competitions and it's great. 
I, I love that. Um, and the reason I, I mentioned it was because uh, I helped facilitate a technovation challenge uh, at the local university here in Calgary with Professor Maya Wang. And, you know, in there, uh, attending it, they, they asked to do one session in a company where they have uh, female developers and they mm -hmm. asked them like, well, what are your biggest questions for the developers? And some of them were, were just saying, look, my mom tells me that like coding, like you're just going to sit in a chair all day by yourself. Like, just don't do that career. Like, it's, it's just not good for you. Um, and it was interesting because the, the developer at the time said, well, no, actually, what we do every day is so collaborative. Every day we're meeting with people, we're connecting with customers. And I think what I like about Technovation was that connection to how is this going to impact our society? And I think that this is the challenge of a lot of our tech today when we think about the future, we only think about the future often, maybe it's a male perspective, from the perspective of technology. Like, oh, AI is going like, to enable this, but we don't think about it from the perspective of society as a whole. Uh, the example was uh, that I heard from my brother the other day was the Jetsons. So the Jetsons had very futuristic technology, but they never predicted in the movie that the role of women working, for example, like the, the, the assumption was most women were staying at home at the time when the Jetsons first came out. So they never envisioned the society changing because of the technology. But I think this is the this is the key challenge of our day is that the technology and the society are are together, they're interwoven. And the challenge is not the AI technology. The challenge is what does AI te and technology do? How does that change our society? And we need more women who are thinking about the consequences of where this is, this is going. Definitely. And you bringing up the consequences aspect actually made me think of something that you shared with me, um, which is this Netflix film called Coded Bias. And it is a must watch, um, very eye opening. Um, and it looks at who who are the developers behind like these big brother like watch companies, right? Or the developers behind the AI that can like read our minds. And why is it that some people based on the color of their skin, when they put their hand under a water faucet, it doesn't sense their hand. Or when they hold their face up to get it scanned, it doesn't sense their face. And so, um, yeah, the, the yeah, lead like in that the, documentary, the, the like... bias against the highly <laughs> melanated... <laughs> Right. <laughs> like, it, it, like, it's all those biases in our society, right? It's the reason why, I mean, AI's, um, sorry, Amazon's AI algorithm was not hiring as many women for their warehouses because mm -hmm. most of the people who are already working there were men. They're just using the existing data. And right. so knowing this code is kind of like knowing the law of computers and how they work. And so... Um, we had a great question from Alice. Um, I want to bring it up if it's possible. So Alice asked, do you think that coding should be considered a subject like English or mathematics in the K-8 curriculum? So K-8, so here's how I would do it. In a dream world, <laughs> um, I would put coding computer science as its own subject in high school. In K-8, I would integrate it mandatorily throughout subjects in every grade level because oftentimes when you're in I can speak for like K to five for example in K to five you tend to see one teacher teaching all of the subjects maybe two teachers teaching all the subjects depending upon where you are I've worked internationally and that has been the case there as well um, but that was also only two countries anyhow I digress um, <laughs> when oh, you get into do. I, I love, I'm always interested in your background and your history give us more <laughs> Well, when I worked in St. Well, both of my um, both of my schools when I was abroad, they were both American schools. So I worked at the Singapore American School, and I worked at the American School of Paris. Um, so they used in both stances. They used um, uh, why was I about to say? Yep, that one. Okay, I was about to say a totally different thing, but they use um, Common Core 
as their standards. And when you are in a school that uses standards, okay, one of the funnest things about the book for me was that um, I love researching and I love data. Like, you give me a spreadsheet and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could stare at this for hours. And I have. Um, (laughs) But um, in the back of the book, it maps Common Core standards to different computer science activities. And when you look at programs like code.org, for example, in their curriculum, they have their curriculum mapped to common core standards. What does that say when a curriculum is mapped? That says that the tool or the product or wherever you're going that says that it's mapped and linked does not need to live on its own. And so when you look at K through five, There are small, simple little things that can happen in classrooms where computer science starts to be infused into the curriculum, right? Like little changes in words that are being used. When you're talking about pattern recognition in kindergarten, what's the pattern here? Link that back to a coding activity where they're seeing tangrams, where they're seeing puzzles. And then the students will start to make the links and they'll go home and say, oh, I just did this thing on the computer. I I did coding, wait, but I also did math. Oh, wait a minute. And the more that they start to see those connections happening in the core subject areas, the more comfortable they get with learning how to code and the more comfortable they get with learning about computer science so that by the time they're in middle school or high school and they're able to choose their electives, computer science now becomes an option because they've been exposed to it and not just in one class, but throughout the duration of their academic career to that point. Oh, Tara, you... I, I love what you're saying. You're you're blowing my mind because it, it like connects all those different things you were referring to earlier. Um, I okay. First of all, like I really appreciate that because to me, it's it's like the problem with computers is it's just that, right? It's it's just a tool, and you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like saying to to people to girls, yeah, be really excited about the tool. And I think what you're saying is that, no, it's not about the tool. It's about how does that tool actually impact people? That's what technovation does. That's what we can do. Like if we do more integration and we say, this is just the way that you get to your, your goal. It's just a tool that helps you, you get quicker there. Then the application becomes immediately apparent and obvious. Like this is so good. Uh, Alice is already saying like, um, oh, if I can add that. Yes, I love that. I wonder if pre-service teachers are being trained to code or to use tech in their lessons more seamlessly. That's, That's a, a great. You, know, you you do some training, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I actually do. Um, and yeah, so I do do some training. Um, and it varies state by state and country by country, right? It all depends on if computer science is a priority in a geographic area then you'll start to see one of two things. Not often will you see both, but you'll see one of two things. One thing would be in higher ed, when teachers are becoming teachers and becoming certified, it'll be a required course. It's not really required in most higher ed programs. Another thing that you might see is with um, new teacher onboarding. So there's actually three things. So the second thing that you might see is with new teacher onboarding, there might be like a lesson or two around here's what computer science is and this is an initiative within our school. Number three is that you'll see schools and districts and I've seen this in New Jersey and I've seen this in some parts of Canada and I have not actively seen this in other places. That doesn't mean that it's not happening. But what will happen is the school board or the district, somebody who's a decision maker in the environment will say, hey, computer science is a priority for the next five years. Our teachers need to learn this. And then what you'll start to see is professional learning opportunities that are being brought in, um, like either that live in the district or in the school environment, or they're brought in from the outside 
to get teachers taught around what computer science is and how to teach it. Because the important thing to understand when it comes to computer science is that it's not a didactic learning program. It's not a didactic learning situation. It's not a thing where, like with some standards, you have to teach how to write an essay. You have to teach proper spelling. You have to teach how to solve for X, right? With computer science, it's more, what we're seeing in education is that it's more about getting the, comfort, getting the educator comfortable with iterating on their practice, getting them comfortable with not knowing the right answer, and getting them comfortable with being a facilitator of how to learn. Because when students are learning this new thing, it shouldn't be something where the teacher is saying, this is how you do it. The students need to figure out how to learn it and the teacher needs to be a guide by their side as they're doing this, guiding along the way, but not going into like standing up at the front of class saying, you're doing step one, followed by step two, followed by step three. And so that that's a so total awesome. shift. <laughs> that is a huge shift. Yeah. Like uh, to me, that that's a key aspect, like comfort. Mm hmm. Like people have this discomfort then to begin with. And it is only through repeated exposure and other people like the role models, which could even be their teacher saying mm -hmm. that this is normal. This, this isn't a big deal. Like, you know, just, you guys can figure this out. I know you can, I figured it out. You can figure it out too. Um, and so really just guiding them, letting them explore rather than, dictating like oh you've got to learn this and then you gotta learn this it's like oh, that's the thing about everything is sometimes when you go like these are a bunch of things that you have to learn like the interest is immediately gone but it feels like you've got to lead with that that interest uh, especially uh, for girls like you got to make that context relevant pretty fast mm -hmm. and if you want them to to be engaged and and to go further on it yeah, and speaking of like with girls, like uh, another thing about it is the purpose. And so what will happen sometimes in schools and in classrooms is that when coding is brought in, especially at the elementary level, it's like, hey, we're going to code this fun game. Okay. Why? Who is it for? Why are we doing this? Like if I wanted to make a game, I would have made a game at home, but I don't. You know, and so when it comes to girls, we need to have that purpose in there. What is the purpose of the game? What is the purpose of the digital story? If we say that it's a game to teach people how to X, Y, Z, that's better than just saying, hey, build a game. And even empowering the students, boys and girls, to have them choose what X, Y, Z is, but that the object of the game is for the end user to learn something. Mm 